Hello and thanks for joining us on 90 Minutes. In this edition, we shall traverse Nigeria to see just how well the Works Ministry is alive to the duties and responsibilities given to it by the Nigerian people. I am Imonia Marere. In a moment, I, along with my colleagues, will take on Nigeria's Minister of Works, Mike Oziegbe Onole Meme, to examine how well the nation is faring in the provision and management of the nation's road infrastructure. But first, this package to set the tone and put the issues in perspective. From records at Nigeria's Federal Ministry of Works, an agency to coordinate various efforts at road construction and maintenance, the Nigerian Road Board was established in 1925. Under that agency, Nigeria constructed its first bitumous surface-dressed road from Lagos to Abelkuta in 1926. In other words, even before independence, Nigeria had recognized the pivotal nature of a planned and effectively administered road sector for overall national development. It would be expected, therefore, that with such a long history of institutionalized road administration, Nigeria should have acquired the competence, capability and culture of effective and efficient road administration. Indeed, before the civil war between 1967 and 1970, Nigeria had one of the best network of roads in Africa. But during that war, these roads, especially those in the southeast and south-south zones, suffered not just neglect but outright destruction. At the end of the civil war, however, the policy of reconciliation, rehabilitation and reconstruction coincided with an era of oil boom which brought unimagined revenue to meet and even surpass the needs of Nigeria's road sector. First, the period between 1971 and 1983 witnessed massive road construction, rehabilitation and expansion in Nigeria. Since then, Nigeria has continued with different degrees of emphasis to provide for improvement and expansion of its road network. Today, the country has a total road network of 200,000 kilometers. Of these, only 65,000 kilometers are paved in bitumen and only 33,000 kilometers which belong to the federal government are administered by the Federal Ministry of Works. Unfortunately, the efficiency and transparency in the application of resources appropriated for Nigeria's road sector has been a matter of both worry and contention. For instance, between 1999 and 2007, under the presidency of Olusegun Obasanjo, over 300 billion naira was appropriated as capital vote for the road sector. Yet, that era has remained a major blot both in unaccountable fund management and the failure of Nigeria's road networks. Projects were only initiated at budget presentations funds appropriated for them but the projects were never executed. Road reconstruction and rehabilitation suffered and Nigerians groaned. As appropriated funds developed wings and Nigerian roads fell into despair and ruin, cost of vehicle maintenance rose, accidents increased, travel time lengthened and the economy became worse for it. This state of affairs has become of great concern to many Nigerians because all experts, including the United Nations and the World Bank, have established a link between good and efficiently managed road network and economic health of any nation. Many stakeholders in Nigeria's road sector have wondered why the administrators watch as if they are helpless as roads are destroyed by excessive equal loading whereby oil tankers authorized to carry 33,000 liters of petrol load as much as 40,000 and cement trucks authorized to carry 600 bags of cement carry as much as 800 this in addition 
to blockage of drains, backlog of delayed and deferred maintenance, and the heavy reliance on road transportation. But the greatest challenge facing the Nigerian road sector remains funding. In 2011, for instance, total budget to the Ministry of Works was 185.1 billion naira. This figure dropped to 180.79 billion naira in 2012 and rose marginally to 183.5 billion in 2013. The breakdown in these allocations show that capital vote in 2011 was 153.38 billion, 149.2 billion in 2012, and 151.25 billion in 2013. These allocations fall far short of the debt portfolio of the ministry and estimated project course for any physical year. In consequence, many projects suffered delays in their completion and maintenance circles could not be respected, leading to poor road situation across the country. At present, the ministry has six agencies under it. These include the Office of the Surveyor General of the Federation, Federal School of Surveys, Federal Road Maintenance Agency, Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Surveyors Council of Nigeria and Regional Center for Aerospace Survey. Do these put together have the capacity and competence to define Nigeria's road sector to become a driver of national economic development with a regenerative capacity to create and sustain resources for its management and maintenance? Thank you so much for staying with us on 90 Minutes. Now let's get to the business of the day. Let's meet the Minister of Works, Mike Oziegbe, Honorable Member, who is right here with us in the studio. Honorable Minister, welcome. Thank you, Mom. The Honorable Minister is an architect by profession and was Minister of State for Defense in the last four months of the Obasanjo administration. Now, the minister is here with us in the studio and with me to engage the minister are three very senior journalists in Nigeria. First from my immediate left is Ismaila Musa. Ismaila is of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Thank you so much, Ismaila, for joining yeah. us. Nancy Ilo, AIT Money Show, who indeed follows the money everywhere it goes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nancy, Thank for you. joining us. Thank you, Monica. And Comrade Chooks Ehirim. Comrade Erem is the chairman of the Abuja Council of the Nigerian Union of Journalists and he is the deputy editor of the Global Paragon magazine. Thank you so much, Thank Comrade you, Chooks, for joining us. Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe to describe the state of Nigerian rules as we met it when you came into office as Minister of Works. Thank you, Mank. Uh, clearly, the preview uh, you showed a while ago aptly captured the situation will mend the state of Nigeria rose. Truly, by May 29, 2011, when this administration came on board, Nigeria's rose were described as death traps. And at the time, we had a plethora of projects totaling well over 168. None of them was completed. They were all in different stages of completion, and some of them were abandoned outright, outrightly. And, uh, it was bedeviled with a lot of problems, and at the time, too, there was no adequate budgetary provision for the ministry to prosecute the project. Uh, staff were not motivated at all. There were a lot of management problems, policy issues, and, of course, project management issues. So that was the state we meant the road sector. And as an administration, we took a decision to truly reclaim the national road network and rehabilitate, reconstruct them so that once again they can play their role as enablers of economic activities and national integration. So that was the state we made the road set of well, What was the strategy you adopted on, on, on meeting this situation on ground to redress this situation? Yeah, Mark, at the time uh, we had the option of continuing with the confusion or 
to break away from what was a sanitizer system. And we chose the latter. So we decided to make sense out of the plethora, num out of the plethora of projects we had at the time. And we decided to focus, based on our limited budgetary provision, on critical arterial roads in order to bring them to quick completion so that Nigerians can begin to enjoy the benefit of good roads. So we prioritized the project. And at the end of the day, uh, between 60 to 80 projects were selected out of the 168 projects. And the little funds we have, we had to focus them on delivering those particular projects to completion. Because before then, there was this saying, you know, in government and indeed in the country, the Federal Ministry of War was always in the habit of awarding contracts, but they never completed any. And as a professional, uh, that didn't resonate with me uh, because I believe that the purpose of starting the project is to bring it to completion so that the people can benefit from that particular project. So, but with the help of the prioritization, we get cracking and uh, we needed to, first of all, you know, reorganize the ministry. And we did just that because the way the ministry administrative structure was, there was no way it was going to deliver on effective service delivery in the road sector to the good people of our country. So immediately, uh, what I did without wasting time was to get Mr. President's approval and the department in the ministry, you can imagine, a network of over 35,000 kilometers of road was being managed just by two directors, one in charge of planning and design for the whole of that network. Then secondly, one who was in charge of construction and rehabilitation and there was no way, it was not humanly possible for effective supervision to have been in place where one man to pretend over authorization of payment, which means uh, more often than not, uh, payments were approved on the basis of just a mere report without authenticating uh, the condition of the road and what has actually been done. So with that in mind, we broke the departments into uh, the, the, at the head office, we broke them into six departments. We now created the Department of Planning and Development, the, the Highway Department of Road Design, Highway Department of Brick Design. And in order to address the issue of quality, we had to, for the first time, establish a Department of Materials, Geotechnic, and Quality Control. Then we set up a Department of Public Private Partnership. And of course, the Road Sector Development Unit, which is a collaborative platform between the Federal Ministry of Work and multilateral agencies like the World Bank and Africa Development Bank, was also upgraded to a full department. Beyond this, in order to ensure that projects were properly managed, I had to establish uh, six zonal directories of road construction and rehabilitation, domiciled in the six geopolitical zones of the country with substantive directors so that they can adequately push and supervise road construction and rehabilitation projects in the various geopolitical zones. And since they are resident there, they are, they are better able to oversee the supervision of this project. And more than that, we also created a new uh, project management template, which will improve road, road construction and maintenance, because that template, the new template, for instance, made it mandatory that you don't certify a job if the job is not of a permanent nature, in order to deepen performance management in road construction. Before this time, what we find out, why people cry about too much uh, increase in cost of construction was that you give a contractor a job, let's say for instance in the south east or south south with the heavy rains, and the contractor immediately on getting to site, he does clearance, and he does a number of, a lot of earthworks, and it's valued. And guess what? The next rate comes and it washes those uh, earthwork away. But meanwhile, the government had paid for it. Then, at the end of the, 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 at the end of the rainy season, the dry season, he tells you that they have been washed out on site. So it, be it became a vicious cycle because the government itself, more often than not, if the project is not abandoned, we have to pay for earthwork again until such a time they are able to do permanent work. But now, if you are a contractor, based on our new template, you go to site and do that kind of thing, of course it will not be certified because that earthwork must be stabilized. That must be uh, the base cost that we enable you to withstand inclement weather, including massive heavy rainfall in the southern part of the country. 
And in that way, we'll be making quite a good result. And there have been a number of new things we have put in place. And that is why two years on, the situation will mend the road. It is no longer the same. After two years, for the first time, we were able to bring about 32 road projects to completion. And we are still counting. So this is where we are in the There's process. 32 rows out of the between 60 and 80, and 80 projects were selected, that, that, that were selected. selected. And All the right. others, we are driving them to early completion. Some of them will be delivered by the end of this year, and many more will follow in the next year. Smiler. What is the state of affairs with regard to the long-awaited uh, second Niger Bridge? Well, the second Niger Bridge, a lot of persons have asked that question. The second Niger Bridge is a project this administration committed itself to delivering to the good people of Nigeria for many reasons. One, the old Ninja Bridge, we all know the precarious situation it is now, and it will be, it, it will be a major calamity uh, if nothing happens. So that was why we prioritized the second Ninja Bridge alongside with the Oweto Bridge over River Ninja, linking local to Oweto. Well, for the second Ninja Bridge, incidentally, we are procuring it under the public-private partnership with government taking up equity on it in order to uh, give confidence uh, to the investor. And as we speak, yes, sometime earlier this year, at about February, we had announced the successful bidders for the second Niger Bridge, which is the Los Vegas, Nigeria PLC, and Ape Consortium of South Africa. And uh, we've been doing quite a lot of things, you know, behind the scene in order to consummate that particular transaction as we speak. The activities leading to the achievement of financial close is in progress. It has moved very, it has moved on very well. But what is important is that at this point in time, preliminary work at the location of the Second Ninja Bridge has commenced, and it is our hope uh, that sooner than later, once major site work are ongoing, the formal flagging up of that project will happen. But it is something that is going on according to plan. Honorable Minister, we, there's a need for adequate funding for road construction and development. But why is it that road construction in Nigeria is still the highest in the world, despite that you still have little funds to, uh, to, to, to deal with? So what strategies are in place to ensure that the little funds you have are adequately used for still maintaining and getting good quality roads? Well, let me quickly say that I do not agree with the notion that road construction in Nigeria is the highest in the world. I have heard this severally. And uh, from my experience at the Federal Ministry of Work, in fact, what led to that impression was as a result of the non completion of road projects in Nigeria as that went due. Because what happens? You give out a road project that is supposed to be completed in two or three years. After nine years, the project is still on. The contractor is still on site. Clearly, sometimes as a result of inadequate funding of the project, and clearly there is no way that particular road project can be delivered at the original contract sum because inflation will set in, which will result in fluctuation of prices, and the contractors are usually very smart. They will have to apply for variation in prices and all that. Then, of course, we got thinking, and that was why we decided to prioritize our project, because our destination really is to begin to enter into annuity contracts for most of our road projects. The way annuity contract works is that if you give a road project and you say it's going to last for 30 years, assuming the cost of that project is 30 billion, you must be able to budget uh, to, to appropriate 10, 10 billion in each of those 30 years. In that way, there is no way you will be able to exceed the cost of such a project. But what do we have? A project, for instance, that requires 10 billion naira funding in a particular year. Maybe the budgetary provision may as well just be 800 million naira. We have a point in case. The Lagos Abekuta Road, between in Lagos and Ogun State, where the Los Bega is working. When I came in, uh, the, there was a problem at Ilezik, and the governor informed us, and we, we moved in. And we got the Los Bega to move into site and all that. And they were working. It got to a point that the budgetary provision for 2011 and 2012 could no longer pay for certificates, you know, that were generated by Julius Berger as a result of the work they have done. 
And we, we managed to keep them going on site until such a point they have to leave site. And in 2013, what was budgeted for that particular project is not even enough to pay the accumulated certificate. So that is the predicament, really, of some of our road projects. But however, because of this, we believe that there's no way we can prosecute our road development program and projects in this country under the envelope system of budgeting. And that is why we are trying to break away from that envelope, the restrictions of that envelope. We are trying to break away by encouraging private sector investment in road development fund. And we're also looking at multilateral agencies who have been working with us. We are looking at ways to scale up their involvement in road development program in Nigeria. And of course, we are looking also at concessionary loan, you know, like just now we are in talks uh, with China as in bank uh, for the funding of the continuation of Abuja Kefi dualization project to continue to Makodi and all the way to Ninth Mile in Enugu. So this is our new direction. And I must say that a lot of exciting things are happening, uh, but we believe that at the appropriate time we'll be able to showcase that to Nigeria. And talking about enhanced funding, the advent of the subsidy reinvestment and empowerment uh, program, SHOP-P, has also given a kind of impetus to some of our projects. I mean, we selected four road projects in order to apply proceeds from the SHOP-P and uh, two new bridges. And the road projects are the dualization of Abuja Lokoja Road, the dualization of Kano Meduguri Road, the rehabilitation of the Bini or uh, Shagamu Expressway, and of course the Onicha Enugu Potakot Expressway. And the two bridges are the local Oweto Bridge, which, which uh, started in our time. In fact, actual construction work started in January 2012, and as we speak, they've already attained about 27% completion. I visited the site in May this year. And like I said earlier, the second Ninja Bridge is also benefiting from the short pay, and the early works for the bridge commenced about three weeks ago. Mm. Honorable Minister, I'm aware that the Minister uh, has mooted the idea of um, what you call oil for contract butter in the, for completion of some of these major roads. Now that we are talking about funding for road construction, what's the status of that concept, of that idea as of today? Contract, I mean, oil for contract uh, concept. Well, I didn't mute that, uh, but I know that at some point in time, people talked about that. But what we are saying is that in order to drive our road development uh, program and projects to, you know, to completion in such a way that it can positively impact on our economic activities in our country, is to upscale the level of funding in the road sector. And there are a few things, to, there are a few things we can do. In fact, other countries have done it. Yes, in terms of our oil policy, I believe that we didn't get it right when we started the exploration and exploitation of oil in this country. In some countries, companies that are giving oil block, they are tied to infrastructure development in those countries. Go to Saudi Arabia, the example is there. And at the end of the day, through such uh, grant, they are able to construct first class infrastructure in the place. The Saudi oil company is responsible for uh, for funding power projects in, uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. And they also fund major road projects. In fact, recently I called for the establishment of an infrastructure development fund so that that way, which we have a first line charge in our budget or our revenue, so that Nigerians can effectively, uh, they will stop you know, paying lip service to road development or infrastructure development and really do it the way it has been done in other climes. We are not reinventing the way, we are only just going to replicate what has been successful in other countries. And we have said, if we could, for instance, uh, through the company and Allied Matters Act, we ensure that a certain percentage of road projects, uh, or sorry, a certain percentage of their profit, pre profit, is contributed for educational development. What stops us from doing the same thing for infrastructural development? If we all agree that for our economy to grow, we need first class infrastructure. We truly need first class infrastructure, but the way infrastructure is being funded now certainly cannot give us that result. So we need to do something different. We need to take bold and courageous steps and find a way to massively fund infrastructure development in this country, be they road or rail or air transportation or water projects or electricity projects or gas projects. We need to approach infrastructure funding in a concerted 
manner. Uh, um, Honorable Minister, permit me to take us a little back. Um, shortly before the last Christmas, yeah. the President gave you a marching order. And that marching order was that you must ensure that Nigerians who are going to travel from one part of the country to another during that festive period did so on very smooth roads. And um, actually before that Christmas, we saw you know, high level performance. Some of the roads that were either to death traps were fixed in record time. So the question I want to ask, why did they have to take that marching order for you to put up that kind of performance? Okay, let me, well, let me put the perspective uh, straight here. Yes, Mr. President gave that marching order in November. But on note of many Nigerians, as early as September, between September and October, I had launched the Operation Safe Passage at the Federal Ministry of Work. It was well reported. You can look for the footage and see the month and date that program was launched. And the purpose of that program was to ensure that most of our road corridors are properly maintained. What many people do not know is that once the Federal Ministry of Work is engaged on major alignments or arterial roads in our country, the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, by law and in order to avoid duplication, do not intervene on such roads. And when I came in, I found out that on such road, a contractor is expected to work from point A to point C. He worked to point B or even before point B, and the budgetary provision for that year is exhausted and he walks away. It is that kind of occurrences, or that kind of occurrence, that motivated me to launch Operation Safe Passage. And the import of that passage, Operation Safe Passage, was clear. It was to ensure and compare contractors who were working on, on subsisting road contract to take up the added responsibility of ensuring that the entire length of the alignment for which contracts have been awarded to them have made motorable all year round. Yes, they could argue that their responsibility is just to work until the road is completed. But I'm a project manager and I know that there are a lot of flexibility even within, the, within such a contract. And we started enforcing it. So when the president gave a matching order, that was already on. But with the matching order of Mr. President, the Federal Ministry of Work now collaborated with the Federal Road Maintenance Agency to scale up maintenance work on sections of our alignment where there was no subsistence contract by the Federal Ministry of Work. And both programs, Operation Safe Passage and the Zero Pothole program, now came together and delivered uh, the good roads that Nigerians experienced during the end of the year.